next one is the cross. 15 different lessons ranging from it's finished. When Christ said it's finished, dear friends, it's finished. Second coming isn't finished. The restoring of our bodies and into eternity isn't finished. But he's talking about the salvation, the redemptive work of Christ, totally finished by the time Christ goes to the cross, becomes a sacrifice, the removal of sin, which Hebrews 10.4 says the blood of bulls and goats couldn't remove the sin. Uh, Christ is able to remove the sin. Thus, facilitating salvation is now available spiritually. Eternal life is available. The Holy Ghost coming and dwelling is available since salvation. So it's, it's the beginning of what the work is, the cross. Once and for all, he dies for everybody in the world. There's so many scriptures on that. You'll enjoy that. So great a salvation. We study the word. Uh, salvation in both the Hebrew and Greek to see what God really means. There's seven different meanings to the word salvation in the Hebrew and Greek. And it's totally complete to cover all of our needs in this world. Healing is involved in the word salvation. The blood of Jesus Christ. We study all the words used in the New Testament on the blood and some in the Old to understand why it had to be the blood. Why it couldn't be done some other way it had to be the death of somebody who had lived the word, overcome sin, and then voluntarily gave themselves as a substitute. And only Christ or God coming, taking on that flesh body could do it. And so the blood is a very, very important study. It will change everybody's mind a lot when you take communion, when you're drinking the juice and you're thinking about what you know about the blood, what it does. You're simply, when you take it, you're verifying that you're living this you have been the recipient of his work in the blood and uh, you're acknowledging thank you Father God for Jesus Christ same way with a broken body but uh, a lot of people take communion and they're taken into the state of sin and they don't realize that they're being damned by doing that uh, the sinless Christ did Christ die spiritually this is a whole writing uh, to refute what Hagen, Copeland, Charles Capps, K.C. Price and all the faith teachers write about Jesus dying with all the sins of the world on him literally and going down into hell and battling Satan three days and three nights. That, of course, is fantasy. It has nothing to do with Christ's work. It absolutely is a slander and misrepresentation of what he did on the cross. The scripture said he did it openly in the cross. And uh, uh, the, to have Christ go down uh, demeans his work and uh, misrepresents the whole thing. And so you need to understand Jesus dies as a sinless Christ for the whole world as a one-time substitute. And we, where, and where hell was. Yes, yes. What hell really means in the Greek, a generic term to show the place of departed dead in which Jesus very clearly teaches you in Luke 16 that there were two such compartments down there, one for the godly, paradise or Abraham's bosom, and one for the ungodly. Unless he lied, he told the thief on the cross that today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And Copeland says, yeah, he came down in the ele elevator, dropped him off in paradise, and he went on into hell. Where's the elevator? Please, I'd like book, chapter, and verse on that thing. You know, you hear all kinds of stories, but you don't realize when you begin to add to the word, you are destroying the effectiveness of the truth thereby, and you are adding something to it. And Deuteronomy and to the Jews, Israel, and Revelation to the church says, if you add anything to God's word, you're cursed. You lose your part in that eternal life. If you take anything away, you want to just say what God says. That's good enough. It works. We work on four terms, uh, regeneration, justification, sanctification, and redemption that are not understood usually by people. So you really see what these terms mean when they're used, how deep and thorough God has covered our salvation. God's timeline in dealing with man from Old Testament to New and the four different types of steps that, that he went through before Christ, or before Israel, then with Israel, then with Jesus coming, and then after the New Testament church starts. God's reasons for man's failure, a list of reasons why man fails. Of course, it's always man's fault. The unpardonable sin, of which there is no forgiveness. Christ versus the law, how he worked within the law, but kept speaking the spirit of the law. And then God's top ten principles, ten things that we feel that are most important to know from God. 